In this video, we'll be taking a look at counter configuration on the PM50D digital panel meter. The PM50D features two programmable digital counter inputs that can be configured in multiple ways. For this demonstration, I'll be configuring my PM50D to count presses of a push button, which I've connected to the counter 1 input on the unit. I've also connected a second push button to the counter 2 input on the unit, which will be used to subtract from the count. Here's a quick look at how I have the two push buttons wired to my PM50 using syncing logic. These inputs can also be wired and configured for sourcing logic or magnetic pickup, and you can find detailed wiring diagrams in the PM50D user manual. I've already logged into my PM50 using admin credentials, so I'll navigate to the device menu to get started. From here, click once on Signal Input Configuration. Now click once on the Counter Input Configuration menu item to expand it. First, we have the ability to select from input A, which is the push button wired to counter 1 input on the unit, and input B, which is the push button wired to counter 2 input on the unit. From there, we can enable the digital filter, select the input logic for the counter, and confirm our logic selection for the input. In this case, I will enable the digital filter since my push button doesn't have a very clean signal. For the input selection for the counter, I'll select high acting because I'd like the count to increment as soon as the button is pressed. Finally, the push button is wired using syncing logic, so I'll leave that selection as is. Now we can click save to confirm these selections. Since I'm using both inputs for this demonstration, I'll now select input B and configure it exactly the same way. So first I'll enable the digital filter, then I'll select high acting for the input logic selection, and then I can click save. After saving, we're ready to move on to counter configuration, so I'll click once on that menu item to expand it. The first thing that you'll see is the three counters that can be configured. Generally speaking, counter A is focused on input A, counter B is focused on input B, and counter C is a special counter which we'll take a closer look at here shortly. Since we're using a single counter with two inputs, one to add and one to subtract, we will only need to configure counter A for this demonstration. First, we'll need to select the appropriate operating mode counter. Click once on the drop-down menu to expose the options. We'll be selecting dual count x1 add slash subtract for this demonstration. This mode allows input A to increment the counter and input B to decrement the counter. For detailed descriptions of all counter operating modes, reference the PM50D user manual. Next, we can select the decimal point. In this case, I'll be leaving this set to zero since we don't need a decimal point for this demonstration. Next, we have list selection. We can configure separate scaling depending on which list is active, but in this case, we will leave this set to list A since we're not using list B for this example. Next, we have scale factor for list A. This is where we could make a single press of the button increment the value of the counter by more or less than one with each press, with up to five decimal places of precision. In this case, we'll be leaving this at one so that one press of the button increments the counter by exactly one. Count load allows users to reset the counter to a value other than zero. In this case, we won't be using count load and I'll just be leaving this value as is. Next, we have the scale multiplier. This allows users to multiply the output of the counter to change the scale. In this case, we'll be leaving this at 1 so that we maintain our 1 button press being equal to 1 increment of the counter. Next is Reset Action, where we select whether we'd like to reset to 0 or reset to our count load value. We'll be leaving this at 0. Finally, we have Reset at Power Up, which we'll be leaving set to No. At this point, I'll save my changes and scroll up to quickly show you where counter B and counter C are configured. So if we were configuring counter B, we would just need to select on counter B, then we would choose our operating mode counter and configure it as we wanted. 
And here's a quick look at counter C, which I mentioned earlier as a special counter. And you'll see that it incorporates counter A and counter B in different ways, and can also be set as a batch or serial slave. At this point, we're ready to test our newly configured digital signal input, so I'll click on the home menu item at the top. I'll start by using the input A push button to increment my counter up to 10. We can see that that worked as expected, and now I'll use the input B push button to decrement the counter back to zero. And we can see that that worked as expected as well. And that's it for counter configuration on the PM50D digital panel meter. Thank you for watching.